it is my pleasure to welcome Josh from 68 to the show. <laughs> hello, hello. Hey, how you doing, hey, man? Hey, how good. are you? I'm doing really good. We are uh, here at day one, uh, the corn tour. Uh, just got through sound checking. Uh, I got my in ears uh, to plug into this computer because I was like, <laughs> too many people around. So I was like, there, I need to somehow isolate myself. So yeah, I got I took the in ears out and I just plugged in. This seems to be working nice. So hell yeah. And I, I heard that you guys just wrapped up sound check not too long ago. So how bizarre does it feel for you to actually realize, <clears throat> hey, in just a few hours, you're about to be on stage again in front of people? <laughs> <clears throat> It's unbelievable. It's the greatest thing. Uh, me, we, we had a couple shows just to sort of warm up for this show. And um, I, I like, I blew, I blew my voice out just yelling in the van and just trying to like, just being like, we're doing it again. We're driving. We're, we're heading to a, to a show. You know, we're going to see people, real people. Um, it's, it's nice. It's a very uh, uh, great feeling to be at, you know. What's been the process for you as you've gone from, you know, sitting in your house as uh, not being able to do anything because all live music has been, you know, dead for all essential terms to, okay, now things are starting to move to now y'all are about to play a show tonight. Can you kind of like walk us through what that has been like for you personally? Uh, first there was uh, joy uh, and then panic uh, and then joy again. So I, I, I picked up my guitar and started just kind of, we, we got to, together and started practicing and I was just like, wow, I am that bad at guitar right now. I haven't, uh, <laughs> I've been doing other stuff, you know? Um, so, uh, but it's, I mean, you know, the process is amazing and, and just, just, uh, again, we were talking about like driving to a show, like, th like this all started months ago when we were just practicing again, like, oh, we, mm -hmm. we should, we should practice, uh, and, uh, get together and stuff like that. And so, um, Cause we have all the stuff we can to, you know, I can practice on my own and <clears throat> my drum, we're just a two piece. So, I, mm -hmm. uh, so my drummer can practice on his own, but there's, that's not the same as like, you know, humans sharing the same energy of the same room, you know, uh, practicing together. So when we got together to do that a few months back, I mean, just that right there, was like, ah, uh, this is like, you know, therapy, uh, <laughs> and then the best sense of the word, you know, like it was just really nice. Um, and then, yeah, we just practice a bunch and, um, just kind of getting used to it, kind of remembering like, oh yeah, wait, was this the riff? No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> so that was a fun process. And we, we wing a lot of stuff. Um, live, we, we, we like to jam quite a bit. And uh, so we were like, wait, what do we do here? And I was like, I don't know. And so it's a lot about like visuals and like hand cues, like when we change parts or whatever. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of things like, wait, I thought you did this. So, you know, this thing or whatever. It's like, no, that's for like a whole nother song. Like, oh, okay. So, so that was a lot of our discussions, you know, it wasn't like, is it a G or an E? It's like, no, it's like, well, I thought, I thought you do some sort of piece. No. Uh, you know, so anyway, that was, that's how our lingo sort of happens on stage. It's pretty fun. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys were like, it's been a year, bro. I've changed as a person, dude. I'm doing different <laughs> things now. Deal with it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm not doing this anymore. I've grown up. <laughs> <laughs> and you had mentioned winging shows there, and I know that it also kind of leans towards the sense of not having a strict set list every night. So has this changed? Do you still kind of plan more now, or do you really just rock it out, go with the flow, and decide what songs you're going to play on the fly? Yeah, we, we definitely plan way less now <laughs> because we're more, we're, uh, first of all, we had an album come out uh, a few, so we have more songs to choose from. So it's just a whole lot more just like, what do you want to play next? You, you know, so, um, I love that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we we definitely um, plan it way less. Uh, we just sort of like we're like, what song do you want to start with? Okay, let's go out there. We'll do that, and then we'll whatever happens will happen. You know, it's it's based on the crowd. It's based on the the ambiance. Based on the wind. It's based on you know everything sort of affects it. You know, and uh, we just sort of let the let the the rock guide. You know, um, there's no sense in like plan over planning it. You know, right. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the album uh, "Give One Take One" came out uh, in March. Uh, if I'm uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was pushed back a little bit because of the pandemic, um, and you guys yeah. had to navigate all of that. So uh, I imagine this is going to be the first time that you guys are just like you know doing these songs in front of people, unless you had a chance before to play some of the songs before you guys yeah. got and like released everything. Um, like what? what excites you most about that? Like you had this record in the hopper, it's been out, people have been able to listen to it and groove on it and jam on it. Like I've been doing over the past couple of weeks. Um, nice. what, what's the most, what's, what's the most exciting thing about finally being able to get these songs out <clears throat> into the world? I mean, just that, just, just being able, cause you know, we had them in our hearts for, you know, 
uh, nearly a year, you know what I mean? Without, mm -hmm. without anyone being able to, without being able to share it with anyone, you know? So just literally just being able to play them live. Um, when we write songs, you know, we, we, we only give birth to them so they can be expressed live. You know, records are fun, but it's really just about playing rock shows. You know, that's the thing that thrills us to death. So, um, so until it, until a song is played live, uh, we, we kind of have the feeling it's not really been fulfilled yet, you know? So that's the, the process of, of this corn tour and everything. These will be the mm -hmm. first times we play a lot of these songs in these cities and, and, uh, ever like anywhere. And, uh, so, but for us, that's the fulfillment. That's why you write a song so that it can be performed live so that you can feel, you know, the energy of everyone, you know, that's the, that's the deal, you know, so. Yeah. And to steal a line from the record so the audience can sing along. Right, man. There you go. Yeah. Done oh, and done. Yep. He, <laughs> he, he had that. He had that in his pocket. He was. Oh, yeah. That. Well, <laughs> yeah, well listen, the thing is, no, but, but like the thing really is like young. listening. Uh, sorry, sorry, Alicia, I didn't mean to cut you off, but like listening to the to the record and like going back is I hadn't heard any of your other stuff or like the as far as 68 goes previous to this yeah. year like i know uh you know your background with the chariot and norma jean and everything like that but listening to this record it's like holy shit this shit is gonna slam live like you can tell just from like the two <laughs> piece in there about that and then when that and when everything goes out in that song it's like you know that the entire audience is gonna be yelling that line over and over and over again and i guarantee you like you can tell me if i'm wrong but i guarantee you you did that on purpose yeah maybe <laughs> you don't want to give away his secrets quite yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's it's the whole the the uh, not to get into the nerdy stuff, but the song that came first, and then I wrote uh, I built a song sort of around that concept of like of how it's not us on stage, and that's the end. It's like all of us. It's us on stage. It's the crowd. It's the it's every like it's a, like I said, and this was pre pandemic when I was writing this stuff, but. It, but how much more applicable is it right now? But it's like this idea that like all of us together, humans, like it's a good, healthy thing for us to get together and be able to share the energy going back and forth and the, and the, and dance on the same vibrations and stuff. So that idea came up to let the audience sing along that whole bit. And then I was like, you know, I started building a song around that. So yeah, it sort of became the, the crescendo that we kind of kept hitting on, you know? I love that. And when it comes to the performances you've been doing as of recent, the headline ones, you've been performing with these very cool banners that simply say rock and roll is here to stay, which I could not mm. agree with more. So tell me a little yeah. bit more about that and why it's just so important to you guys to remind everyone of that message, because I truly believe <clears throat> that rock and roll will never die. Yeah, well, I think it's more of a, uh, I don't know, like the, like the spirit of it, you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. it's this idea of like humans getting dirty and, 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 you know, getting, <clears throat> getting down, to, you know, just like there's something about, you know, this idea of like loud music pulsing through your, like it, 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 it moves through you, you know, and it's something that if you get it, you get it, you know, and, um, and, you know, music will always change and shift and evolve and, and come and go. There's push, there's pull, but, but um, there's there, the spirit of rock and roll, that idea of just some folks on a stage playing loud music that's like to be pushed out forward, you know, that uh, that will never die. Uh, no matter how much how electronic things get like that will always be there because it, it, it's seven. there's something barbaric about it. There's something like in our DNA. It's like, or at least for a people I assume like us, maybe not everybody, <laughs> but like for people like us, it's like, you need that. It's, 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 it's therapeutic. It's, it's healthy. It's for a society, for as individuals, mentally, uh, spiritually, heart, everything, all the whole bit, it's just a healthy place to be. And, um, and to nobody's fault, you know, it got sucked away for a year and a half. And, uh, so to, to be able to have that back is, is very, I mean, it's very, uh, a very healthy spot to be in you know um yeah. i think uh so yeah so it'll never die uh, how could it you know so yeah and alicia and i were just talking like literally like a couple of minutes before you got on about how uh like you just basically uh, uh talked about what we were talking about before as far as like yeah. with fire from the gods and uh corn being like music where you get your energy out you know Absolutely. like you're having a shitty day or whatever it is you can turn on that loud music or that uplifting music and go and i also like 
for for y'all as a two piece, you know, like obviously two pieces in in rock and roll are nothing new, but I think sure. it just shows people that you can you just need a guitar and a drummer and like that's about mm -hmm. it. You can go and get your shit out and do that. Um, I don't know if that's like a challenging thing for you, if that's something that you set out to do previously, like when you formed sixty eight to do that. Um, but I think that just shows that rock and roll ethos of like, look, you just need a drum and a guitar, maybe not even that, just <laughs> your emotions to get out there for the crowd to sing along. <laughs> Not even that. You don't even need those <laughs> items. You just you just need a, an idea, you know, and a, and a, and some sort of passion behind something. But uh, but yeah, when I started '68, as you had mentioned before, you know, I come from a a, a couple of different five piece bands, and and uh, so when I started this, I was like, I don't want to just do an, another version of the Chariot or something. So to to sort of flip the script for my own uh, mentality and my own. Um, you know, wherewithal, I was like, oh, let me try doing this. Let me try see if I can pull it off like a two piece. That'd be fun. I got to play guitar. I got to hit pedals. I got to make sure I'm in the right spot at the right time. So that becomes part of the show. That becomes part of the sort of the stress and the chaos of, of the whole gig, you know? Um, and so for me, it was all about that, that adventure making, how, how can I make it fresh for me again? Cause I had done the five piece thing, uh, you know, two, two editions of it. So, um, so yeah, you know, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, look, little bit of passion and, 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 and I mean, I don't even, I don't, I'd like to, that's a good uh, thought experiment. How, how, how small can a guy with a guitar just like blow your mind, you know? And, and I'm sure, he, I'm sure that's possible. I'm sure it's doable. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we host a, a new music show on Mondays, and there is a busker from <laughs> London who, like, it's literally, you know, one one person band. And, like, I listened to this, and I was like, oh, this sounds like Caius. And I looked at the dude. He's got an acoustic guitar that he's running through, like, pedals and stuff like that. And I it's love like, oh, it. Okay, there you go. That's cool. I love that, man. Passion can be expressed in so many ways. You know, you can have corn and all that sort of low heavy just like pulsing and then you can have like you know every sort of uh all across the spectrum of different stuff i've definitely seen acoustic artists where i'm just like this is so passionate you know like it's almost more impressive because i have screaming guitars and <laughs> you know growly vocals and you know and i've got distorted everything and uh you know and so it's almost like you know cheating in a way and then you have this like guy with a acoustic guitar just like laying it out there that's that's a fun time too you know yeah absolutely <clears throat> well just speaking to fun times i know that very soon just a couple hours time you guys will be hopping on stage to open for corn stain so josh i want to say thank you so so much for hopping on here it's been great being <clears throat> able to chat with you today thank you for having me and uh yeah I really appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see a bunch of people out on stage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will see you in Louisville, sure my many. friend. I'll be at Louder Than Life. Yeah, yeah, come up and say hey. We'll do. We'll shake hands like the old yeah. they used to. I, we hey. can do that. Yeah, I'll bring my hand sanitizer just to do exactly. this because we're in we're that world now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's weird really. how excited I got to think about actually high-fiving somebody. Like, that should. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way Absolutely. we live with everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, but again, right this has been Josh from 68. Of course, be sure to hit that ticket link in the chat right now to grab your tickets to see them live with Corn and Stained. We'll see you soon. Take it easy, Josh. Be safe. Take care.